Good morning. Wow, I like that. How is everybody this morning? Awesome. Beautiful sunrise this morning. Uh, Why don't you guys come on in and stand up and join us as we uh, begin our worship time. time and say good morning to everybody. Good morning. Praise the Lord. We hear it from the, the front row. Well, almost the front row. Second row. Uh, 
There are some new faces here this morning. I want to welcome you to Maranatha Baptist Fellowship. Uh, my name is Sean Eckhoff. I'm the pastor here. Uh, inside your bulletin on the far right, you'll see a tear-out sheet uh, that you can write your information so we have a record of your visit, and we know how to better administer and pray for you. And, and as everybody else knows, that's for you too. If you've got a prayer request, go ahead and jot it down on there for us. Um, do we have any praises this week? Jenny got a raise. <laughs> that is a praise. That's <laughs> easy. <laughs> All right. Uh, and other praises. It is a praise. You're getting to see your kids and grandkids. Have, haven't got to see them in quite a while. And some that you some, some that haven't yet. Wow, that is a praise. Um, but yeah, if, if anybody would like to fill in and do a Bible study at one of the nursing homes, uh, he did put a list back here that you can uh, take a look at. Uh, any other praises? But that's definitely a praise. I mean, that is a praise. I mean, finish a job on, on, on one Friday and within a, a week have, have a full-time job that's not temp. Uh, that is such a blessing. God is faithful. Um, any other praises? Wow, you got an iPhone. I don't even have an iPhone. But what a praise. And a cool hat. And a cool hat. That's right. Um, Jeannie and I were able to go to Burlington this weekend, um, Friday, Saturday, and it was such a blessing. The car wa ride there and back were filled with great conversation, and um, it was wonderful as uh, all the ladies were coming in on Friday night, just all these white-haired ladies coming in. <laughs> and I looked at Jeannie, and I'm like, these are my people. I just love this age group. So um, we had some younger girls as well, but Jeannie did such a wonderful job and just blessed me. And um, it was a great time. So Praise God. That's Jenny's age group, too. She just, <laughs> she calls it an addiction. <laughs> 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 the hair's not white yet. Uh, any other praises? Yet. <laughs> <laughs> Did he have a praise? <laughs> oh. Well, uh, on last Sunday, I want to thank God that I survived coming from Wichita. I had a little bit of an incident uh -oh. in which I slid off the road several times. Uh, I, I spun, and I ended up facing the other way. <laughs> and it was rather kind of, I ended up in a ditch, not not on the road. That would have been really bad, seeing my life flash, flash before my eyes, you know. But um, that didn't happen. But I was, I spun. I At first, I was kind of uh, less... <laughs> less worried about my like, oh I'm in a ditch I can get out of this but it's snow and I ended up messing up my car and so $357 tow yeah that's not that's not the praise part no that's the prayer request <laughs> yeah <part. laughs> well I mean it was in between Emporia and the, the accident happened in between El Dorado and Emporia so that was quite a it was still pretty hefty yeah but um, I'm glad I survived it. Uh, my my mom and grandma wouldn't stop touching me, <laughs> but I would. I'm glad I survived. So, yeah, just be in prayer that I can still financially take care of my vehicle and that it remains fine. All right. All right. Uh, that is that is a praise. Uh, and and you you that God's God's speaking to you because that's two accidents in six months. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, what, what are you trying to say, Sean? Uh, I'm saying God is talking to you somehow. <laughs> I'm not sure. Get a new car, but Sean? Get a new, <laughs> get a new car? That's, yeah, that's, there you go. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Praise God that he uh, is all right. Uh, Kenba? God is faithful. He does answer prayer. It's not always in the way we would like it to have it answered, but it's answered regarding His will. So, And it is a blessing to have you back with us this weekend. Good to see you again. Uh, other praises. All right, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Father God, we just come before you so thankful, with such grateful hearts. Lord, thank you for so many blessings this morning, that the praises that we've heard. Lord, I just uh, thank you for, for the safeties. Thank you for the being cancer-free. Thank you for uh, the raise. Thank you for being healthy. Lord, um, I was sharing with people this morning that uh, this winter is such a contrast to last winter, and I thank you for that in, in, in our health. Lord, I just ask that you'd continue to be with us this morning as we sing praises, worship your name, and bring you honor and glory. Be with us as we continue this, and, and be with us as we study God's word. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, uh, you know it's a little difference up here today. I'm not Doyle. I don't play the guitar. Uh, I got a call. Oh golly, what's it? Was it Monday or Tuesday? And uh, Doyle and I had talked a while back, and uh, with the elders and with Pastor about uh, switching up the worship a little bit. And I made the mistake of saying I might be willing to lead one week. So he calls me Tuesday and says, "Hey, we're going out of town. You want to lead Sunday?" So. Uh, I did a lot of prayer, full uh, searching for God, f uh, from God, and um, he blessed me with uh, one, giving me a good group and an excellent keyboardist to help back me up today, So uh, and a guitarist that can switch from bass back to regular guitar, so I have a guitar background too, So uh, and uh, wonderful singers. So um, why don't we go ahead and, and stand and prepare our hearts for the message and for worship.
John 3.16 is a very popular verse. Everybody knows that one. But if you stop and think about it, uh, God sent his son, not because we loved him, but because he loved us first. 
He sent His Son to die for each and every one of us over 2,000 years ago before any of us were born and walking this earth. These next two songs just remind us that God loves us first and that we are returning His love because of the precious gift of His Son that saved us and gives, that, that gives us the offer of eternal life.
Father, and Lord, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for the sacrifice that you made. Thank you for that beautiful gift that you've given us, just sitting there waiting for us to accept it. Lord, the fact that you love us no matter what we've done, no matter what we've gone through, Lord, you will always be there for us. We just need to turn to you. Lord, we just thank you for this time of worship. Lord, we just pray that it's prepared our hearts to hear your message today. Lord, we just pray that you would be with Pastor Sean as he delivers your word to us today. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. All right, well, uh, last week we had uh, snow. Thank you, Maria Allen. Um, so for those of you who missed last week, Happy New Year! Happy New Year. All right. Um, last year I started preaching through the, the book of John, and you'll be glad to know that we're going to be getting back into the book of John, just not this week. Um, <laughs> I know. Well, see, that, 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 that's right. It's a teaser. It gets you to come back next week. Um, so, but, but if you missed last week, again, Happy New Year, but you, you also picked the week to miss that dreaded tithing sermon. But since I, I didn't want you to feel left out, I'm just going to repeat that sermon this week. Oh, just Shammy's like, huh? <laughs> uh, not really, but, but kind of. Um, last Sunday's message was more like a Bible study than a, than a sermon. Uh, it was kind of like uh, back in November we did the, the baptism and we, we kind of did a, a and the message was on baptism and, and what it is, what it isn't. And, and that's what the, the message was last week. So we, we looked uh, at when tithing actually began. And, and we found that it was actually before God gave the laws to Moses. We saw that Abraham and Jacob... Uh, both who were long before Moses, uh, they, they both tithed. Um, and when we talked about Jacob tithing, we also found in Genesis 28, verse 22, Jacob told God, he said, And of all that you give me, I will give a full tenth to you. So if you weren't here last week, you, you missed me having Eric Young and Russ Berlue come up uh, to help emphasize, emphasize this point that uh, Jacob was making and, and Jacob understood. Um, but it was really funny because during, during that little uh, helping session, uh, er everybody at one point in time thought that Lydia was, well, going to have a baby. And, and all she actually wanted was a china cabinet. Um, so that, that, that was pretty humorous. Um, and if that went right over your head because you missed it, well, it's online and you can watch it if you want. Anyway, uh, that was the illustration uh, and, and what the illustration was for was to show that God owns everything. Everything is God's. He owns it all. All of our possessions, all of our money, all of our, our children, our, even our time is all God's. Uh, he just gives it to us to manage for him. Um, then, in his word, he gives us clear instructions on how we're to use our possessions and, and our money and our, our children. And I guess it's not really use the children to an extent, raise the children, how we're to, to manage what he gives us. His, his word is very instructive in that. And this is an important concept that Jacob understood. And if we can grasp the same concept, then tithing and giving becomes a much easier task. Here's how it works. If I was to step down here and give Russ, come here. Here, these are hundred dollar bills. We're, we're going to give this example here. I know my props stink. If I was to give him ten one hundred dollar bills and then say, okay, now I want you to go out here and give a hundred dollar bill to somebody, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, and, well, he would probably, literally, he'd, he's, he's thinking, 
can we do this all day? <laughs> because, you know, you're giving me a thousand. I get to keep nine hundred. I'll gladly give somebody a hundred dollars every time you give me a thousand. I mean, that's that's what it would be like. I, I could stand here and do this all day long. Um, but what if what if I gave Russ a thousand dollars, and then a week later I say, oh, by the way, Russ, I want you to go ahead and give a hundred dollars of that to somebody else. Things kind of change the longer you hold on to money and possessions. As Dave Ramsey would say, you get used to Uncle Benjamin. He's family now. And, and, and you, might, you might think to yourself, now, oh, wait a second, um, can, can we discuss this for just a minute? Because, well, this is mine. And so things change. But the long, so the longer we have something, the more we become attached to it is basically what happens. The more, the more we start feeling like we're the owners of it. But we're not. We're only the managers of what God has given us with, given us and blessed us with. Um, obedience to God's word in the area of giving becomes so much easier when you understand that we're not the owners. We're just the managers. And then also we, we looked at last week, the tithes were paid to specific places. And I said, this is still carried forward to today. Uh, the Lord wants you to uh, seek him, and, and he wants you to follow his leading as to where you would uh, worship, where you would fellowship, where, where you would serve in a church. And that is where the tithes should be paid. And we also saw that church staff, leaders, uh, pastors are not exempt we're to give in the exact same manner. Um, in fact, we're, we, we're leaders. We should be leading by example. Um, uses of the tithes were also discussed, being used in, in uh, support of God's servants and ministries and missionaries. Uh, it's, it's also used to, to help care for the poor and less fortunate, widows and orphans. And we finally saw in Matthew 23, 23, where Jesus affirms or agrees with the tithe in the New Testament. He tells the Pharisees in that, in that verse, he says that they should be tithing, but not neglect the weightier matters of justice, mercy, and faithfulness. Um, so th this summed up last week's message, um, but there's more. Jesus says, yes, you should tithe. And, and although he affirms that, uh, he continues to speak about giving a lot. Jesus spoke about money and material possessions probably more than anything else in the New Testament. He spoke a lot about money and our possessions and what they are to be to us and what we're to do with them. So uh, last week I told a story about a godly deacon who said that even if tithing wasn't affirmed or taught in the New Testament, it would be a really good place to start. So today's message is going to be similar to last week's in that it's, it's less of a sermon and more of a Bible study. And I gave my sermon notes away, but that's okay. If you look, again, you'll have this, the, the notes. And for those of you who weren't here last week, don't freak out when you see all of the scripture references because we won't be going over all of them. It's, it's for you and your benefit if you feel led to go home and uh, use that as your own Bible study. Uh, you'll have some passages there to, to study. So um, this morning we're going to look at the motives for giving of material possessions, the manner of giving, how God measures people's giving, and how God rewards the giver. So first, uh, and, and last week uh, I did say that e even though uh, we're giving, we need to be aware of our motives for giving. You, you you probably remember that. I said, you know, are we giving to try and win, win God's approval? Because we can't. Um, God's approval is impossible apart from a relationship with Jesus Christ. We cannot win God's approval. Uh, are, we, are we giving to try and win other people's approval? And, and we'll discuss that just in a little bit, a little bit further into the message. Um, or are we giving because we're being obedient to God 
who has seen fit to love us enough to send his son to die on a cross for us. He saw fit to pay a, a debt that we could never pay on our own. So the first motive for giving should be out of obedience. Matthew twenty two twenty one reads, Therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and to God the things that are God's. Give to God the things that are God's. Now, what, what did I say a few minutes ago? It's all his. Um, give to glorify him. He, he's not even asking for it all back. Just some of it. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 says, Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And this, this reminds me of a little boy who, whose father gives him two quarters and a dollar on Sunday morning and, 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 and takes him to church. And, he, and on the way to church, he tells the boy, now, when they pass the offering plate, you, you put the dollar in, and, and then you can keep the 50 cents for, for ice cream. And the boy's like, okay. Well, there, he, he, the little boy sits with his Sunday school class, uh, not with the parents. He sits with, he sits with his friends. And when they get home, Dad notices that the little boy still has the dollar. And he says, um, son, why do you still have your dollar? Well, it's like this, the boy starts to explain. You heard the preacher this morning, and he said that you should be a cheerful giver. And he said, well, I could cheerfully give the 50 cents easier than I could the dollar. <laughs> Uh, and and it's, a, it's, it's funny, and, and, but how many times are we that, in that kid's shoes? Sometimes it's, it's a, I can be a little bit more cheerful if I, if I don't give quite as much. <laughs> so we give out of obedience. Next, we, gi we give because of the gratitude for God's generosity. First Chronicles 29.14 reads, But who am I and what is my people? that we should be able thus to offer willingly. For all things come from you, and of your own have we given you. He's saying, you've given all this, and, and here, who are we that we can give this back? How, why would you allow us to do this? I mean, it's, it's an God is allowing us to give this back to him. But, but not only that, he's even allowing us to keep more than he's asking. We're giving back to God out of his generosity, all things come from you, and of your own we have given you. So we're giving back to God something that was his to begin with, and it really never was ours. In the aftermath of World War II, a husband and his wife were getting ready to, to go to a memorial service for the son of some friends of theirs. The man had been killed in, in the service. His family was dedicating a window to their church or in their church, to this young man who had sacrificed his life. And the window cost $50,000. What a beautiful thing to do in honor of their son, the wife said to her husband. Suddenly, she turned around with an ashen look on her face and said, What are we going to give? What are you talking about, he said. We don't need to give anything. Our son came back alive and safe. That's exactly what I mean, she pressed. Our friends lost their son, and they're giving $50,000. We got our son back, and we're not giving anything. This lady finally had an understanding of God's generosity. God was generous enough to allow her son to come back from a war that he didn't allow the other man and the other family's son to come back. So we give out of obedience and we give because of God's generosity. Amen. Third, we give because of love for others. 1 John 3.17 reads, But if anyone has the world's goods and sees his brother in need, yet closes his heart against him, how does God's love abide in him? As Christians, the love of Christ is supposed to flow from us. We should be fountains of love spilling over into the lives of those around us, whether we know them or not. 
From that love should also come generosity on our part. Where we see a need, if we're able. Now, I understand there are some scam artists in the world today. I get that. I also understand that not everyone asking for help really needs help. And I'm ashamed, but I'm going to admit it. I've driven by, by people standing on the road with signs asking for help, and a thought goes through my mind. And I'm sure the same thought's probably gone through years. I could be wrong. But if I give them money, it'll go to cigarettes or booze. God forgive me for judging in that fashion. But there have been the other times when we've stopped and we've asked how we can help, how we can practically help a person. We've gone and, and, and brought back food. We've gone and brought back warm clothes. And that's what we're to be doing. We often get caught up in thinking that giving is always about money. But it's not. Giving, uh, yeah, it, it can be of money, but it can be other, of other material things. It can be of food. It can be of clothing. It can be of diapers. It can be of toothpaste and toothbrushes. You know, we just went through Operation Christmas Child, and we watched Cy pack a box. <laughs> you know, he, he was willing to send them bottle rockets for crying out loud. It can be of other things than just money. Giving can be of time by volunteering at a homeless shelter or a food bank. In fact, what better way can you show your love than to spend time with someone and listen to what they have to say. We give out of obedience because of God's generosity and because of our love for others. Next, we're going to take a look at the manner of giving. I'm actually starting to develop a sore throat. <laughs> but I've been healthy all winter up to this point, so... I'm not going to complain. Um, I'd like it to wait till February so we could get moved. But <clears throat> anyway, so we're going to look at the manner of giving. And, and first, uh, we're to give willingly and cheerfully. Matthew 10:8 says, "Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying. Give without pay." Jesus is telling the disciples to go and give to the community. He says, give healings, raise dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons, and do these things without pay, he says, because you, you've received without, pay, with, without paying. Um, they, they received the ability to do all of these things and go out and do the healings and cleanse the lepers and, and raise the dead and cast out demons. And they didn't pay for it, they didn't pay for the ability. They didn't earn it. It was given to them. Now, we may not have the abilities to do all of those things, but we were given something very valuable uh, without paying one red cent. We were given the blood, of Christ, the blood that Christ shed for us to pay that debt that I was talking about earlier that we couldn't pay on our own. We should be willing to give back without pay and do it cheerfully. Now, earlier I said, I, I talked about and, and talked about it last week and said we need to check our motives for giving and, and ask, uh, are, are we giving just to gain other people's approval? Um, so the next point is we're not to give for show. Um, Matthew 6, 1 through 4, it reads, Beware of practicing your righteousness before other people in order to be seen by them. For then you will have no reward from your Father, who is in heaven. Thus, when you give to the needy, sound no trumpet before you, as the hypocrites, hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may be praised by others. Truly I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you. The Pharisees were famous for doing just this. Uh, they wanted people to see how religious they were in their prayers, in their giving, in how well they kept the law. 
they, they wanted to raise themselves up above the rest. Um, and one of the things that I've really enjoyed about Maranatha Baptist Fellowship is not passing the plate. Um, I've always felt I didn't know how to get around it. You guys had it figured out long before I got here. But it, it, to me, it seemed like an interruption in the worship service. It kind of dashed the flow here you are, you're, oh, yeah, and you're, you're feeling good, and they're like, okay, we're going to pass the plate, and, and you sit down and you wait for the plate to be passed. It just, I don't know, it seemed awkward to me. Um, but no plate is passed. Um, if people want to give, there's the box at the back, and they're willing to, to get, drop it in. Uh, with the plate, you know, he says, when you give, don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing so you may give in secret. When you pass the plate, it's kind of hard to give in secret because everybody sees what you're doing. Um, so with this, with the box idea, you, you, it's easier to give in secret or anonymously, if you will. So I like that. Thank you, Pastor Gary, for, for starting that. Um, we're to give willingly and cheerfully, but we're not to give for show. We're also to give regularly. Um, when you think about it, giving is actually an act of worship. Um, just like being obedient in, in other areas of God's word would be considered worship. Um, showing love of Christ to a, a stranger is worship. Christians often, oftentimes try and compartmentalize that word worship. Worship. We just finished worship. Worship was the singing portion. And we, we do. We, we tend to compartmentalize that. And, and it means when we gather together on Sunday morning to sing songs about Jesus, that's worship. But yes, that is worship. But worship is an everyday, all-day event if you make it worship. Worship is the act of praising God in the way that you live your life and, and that he's given you and how you can better bring glory to his name. Worship is in how you work. Worship is in how you play. Worship is in, it, it's in everything we do. It, it reminds me of Jackie Chan in The Karate Kid. He's, he, he, he tells Dre, he's teaching him karate, and, and uh, he said, you know, Kung Fu is in how you treat other people. Kung Fu is in how you live your life. Kung Fu is, and he said, Everything is Kung Fu. Well, I, I don't know that I, I agree with the philosophy behind all that, but I do agree that everything can be worship if you make it worship to glorify him. So giving is actually an act of worship, and we should give regularly. 1 Corinthians 16, 2 says, On the first day of every week, each of you is to put something aside and store it up as he may prosper so that there will be no collecting when I come. Paul's telling the Corinthians to put aside something on the first day of every week. Well, the first day of every week is, is typically when Christians meet to worship in a, a group setting. They, they, they're worshiping as a group of believers. And so if it was good enough for the Corinthians, I guess it's probably good enough for, for Maranatha Baptist Fellowship too. Now, in that passage, it says to give each week. But what if you get paid biweekly or you get paid once a month? Um, well, I, I guess you could write four, you could still write four, you know, divide your check into either two or four and give once a week. But maybe, I, I think the point is to give regularly. Maybe your regularly is different than somebody else's regularly. Maybe regularly for you, if you're paid biweekly, is giving once every two weeks. Maybe regularly for you, if you get paid monthly, is, is to give one, one check on the first Sunday of every month. The, the principle is that it should be a habit. Just like coming to church every Sunday morning, is, it has become a habit for you. It's regular. So should giving be. Give willingly. Give cheerfully. Don't give for show, but give regularly. Lastly, we're to give generously. 2 Corinthians 8, verses 2 and 3 reads, For in a severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty 
have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means of their own accord. Now this passage is speaking of the, uh, in, of, about the churches in Macedonia who were extremely poor. Um, poor because of war. Poor because of the Roman rule over the area. The area. I mean, they were just extremely poverty stricken. Yet they found abundance of joy in giving. And Paul even says, some gave even beyond their means. After last week's message, I was speaking with somebody, I don't remember who, but um, I remember saying, you know, I would never expect somebody to go into debt to give. Uh, the Bible doesn't teach that at all. In fact, the Bible has a whole lot to say about going into debt and, and don't do it. Um, I also wouldn't want to see anyone starve to give. However, when we look at what we spend, there are always places that we can cut back. One less coffee at five bucks. Um, one less bagel on the way to work. When we look at our checking balance and wonder where the money would come, come from if we, if we were to, to give, um, if I give, I'm not going to have grocery money. Where, where will the food come from? Well, I've mentioned Dave Ramsey several times in the past couple weeks, and that's because he's financially wise. God has shown him from Scripture how to handle money, and he feels he needs to teach people. And I thank him for that. Uh, Dave Ramsey would ask, how much is your cell phone bill every month? That's one of the first places he'll tell you to cut. Do you really need that fancy phone with the high-speed 4G LTE Internet with it'll cook you breakfast in the morning? Uh, do, do we need that phone that costs me $170 a month? Um, when I went through financial peace, uh, Dave was constantly smashing my toes on how I could cut back. I'm like, ooh, wow, that, that's me. Our cell phone bill is 100 bucks a month. I could probably cut back. Ooh, I don't really need cable. Well, we didn't have cable, but we did have Sky Angel, which, you know, we justified it by saying it's Christian programming. It's family friendly. It's also 25 bucks a month that you really don't need. So we did away with it. And uh, so anyway, th there are places that you can cut back. And, and when, you, when, you, when you cut back, not only does it help you pay off debt quicker, but it helps you give more generously. So give willingly and cheerfully, not for show. Give regularly and give generously. So we've looked at the different motives and manners of giving. Next, I, I want to discuss how God measures the giving of his people. God measures by a different standard than the world. Go figure, right? Um, everything God does is different than the world. Um, good to the world is evil in the sight of God. Poor in the sight of the world is rich in the sight of God. The world says, kill your enemies. God says, love your enemies. Pray for them. The world never would have thought of this concept. But God showed his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The world tells us to kill our enemies, yet God sent his son to die for his enemies. Completely opposite thinking when it comes to the world. So God uh, has a different way of measuring the giving of his people. He doesn't measure in the, in the standards of the world. Mark 12, verses 41 through 44 reads, And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Many rich people put in large sums, and a poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which make a penny. And he called his disciples to him and said to them, Truly I say to you, this poor woman or this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the offering box, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. 
See, everybody else was giving out of their overflow, their excess. Yeah, I can give this. We, we're, we've got plenty. She gave everything she had, everything she had to live on. And Jesus said that this woman gave more than all the others because of that. He looks at our giving different than the world. Um, I want to point out another interesting thing about this passage that I, I think sometimes gets overlooked. Verse 41, it says, And he sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. And again, I mean, that's, that's perfect. Um, that's the solution right there, offering box, not an offering plate. Um, anyway, he sit, he's sitting there, and he's, he's watching as people put money into the offering box. Now, how many people have seen the movie Flywheel? All right, se several people. Uh, if you've not seen it, try and find it, rent it. It's a really good movie. Um, it's about a used car salesman, and we all know about used car salesmen. Okay. Not all of them are like that. Um, but he was at church. This is, this is before his God grabbing a hold of him and going. He's sitting in church, and as the offering plate is being passed, he grabs an offering envelope, and he opens it up, and he looks to ensure that nothing is in it, and he closes it, and as the plate comes by, he puts the envelope in, and he passes it on. He's, he's doing this so... It, he appears to be a giver in the church, which is, is it's even worse because he wasn't even giving. So he was just doing it for show. Um, he wasn't giving for show. He, it was just the for show part. So verse 41 gives us insight, though. Uh, we may fool ourselves, and we may fool others, but we're not fooling God. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the people putting money into the offering box. Might I remind you that Jesus Christ was God in the flesh. He is still God, and he knows our giving habits. We can't fool him. So God measures his people's giving different than the world. God also measures his people's giving with regard for their capacity to give. Deuteronomy 16, 17 says... Every man shall give as he's able, according to the blessing of the Lord, your God, that he has given you. Again, um, God doesn't expect you to go into debt uh, or starve to death in, in order to give. Um, God's word says to give as you are able. But again, look at your circumstances, and I'll bet you the able is more than what you would originally think. Now, we briefly spoke last week about God's rewards as well. Um, God rewards the giver appropriately. If you look at Proverbs 11.25 uh, with me uh, to see this, and, and actually the, the point is verse 11.25, but I'm going to back up, and I'm actually, we're going to read ver Proverbs 11.24 and 25, and you could actually take verse 24 as a kind of warning. Proverbs 11, 24, 25 says, One gives freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. Whoever brings blessing will be enriched, and one who waters will himself be watered. Not one who waters himself <laughs> will be watered. One who waters will himself be watered. Don't switch the words around. Big change in the meaning. So God does reward faithful giving. As far as verse 24 is, is concerned, how many people do we know uh, chasing after happiness will say in the sports world, if I could just make the pros, if I could just be a starter, if I could just get that multi-million dollar contract, if I could just get the endorsements from Nike and Pepsi, If I could just dot, 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 on and on and on. They'll get it. Oh, if I could just get this. And then they get it. If I could just get... And it never ends. Oftentimes we can spend all of our energy 
and money chasing dreams that are just that, dreams. I'm not saying it's a bad thing to dream, but where are your priorities? Chasing those dreams, we can be caught and only suffer want. The, the point is this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. That almost sounds biblical. Like 2 Corinthians 9, 6. God rewards the giver appropriately. Um, I read a passage from Malachi last week. Uh, Malachi 3 last week, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a different one. But Malachi 3, again, is the only place in Scripture where God says, test me. But this re- week, I'm going to read uh, Luke 6, verse 38. It says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it, will be measured back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken, not stirred. Running over will be put into your lap. For with the measure you use it will be measured back to you. He measures you in how you use what he gives you. God's rewards and blessings can be... uh, far outweigh anything you can imagine. Uh, I've heard people say you can't outgive God. And that is absolutely true. You can't. And again, uh, though th- this is where some people might need to check the motives for their giving. Why are you giving? Are you trying to use God as some sort of cosmic slot machine? Um, the more quarters that you, you shove in, the better chance you're going to have of, of him giving you a million dollars. Um, reminds me of a woman. She was talking to God one day and, and just pondering things. And she said, God, how long is a million years to you? And God answered, it's only a second. And she just pondered that. You know, I mean, a million years, that's a, I mean, the earth isn't even that old. And it's one second to God. She's, she's pondering this and she says, God, how, how much is a million dollars to you? He says, it's one penny. So she sat there for, for quite a while trying to mull, mull these things over that she, you know she's been getting from God. And suddenly she says, God, could you give me just one penny? And God quickly answered, just a second. God is not a slot machine, but he does overwhelmingly reward the giver. Lastly, God's giving should be the model for our giving. 2 Corinthians 9.15 reads, Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. I can't expound on that. I mean, what more can be said about that point? I mean, how do you outgive God? You don't. Thanks be to God for his inexpressible gift. He gave his one and only son, and you'll never come close to it. In the last couple of weeks, we've, we've covered a, a ton on tithing and giving. Um, and, and again, I don't want to sound like one of those TV preachers that, who says if you're sick or if you're struggling in life, uh, it, it's because you're not giving enough to this ministry. Scripture doesn't teach that. And and those guys actually make me angry uh, because they're blaspheming God's holy name when they say things like that. They're putting words in in the mouth of God that God would never say. And and basically, they're causing the rest of the world to see us as money-grubbing maggots. And that's how a lot of the world sees us. The church just wants my money. That's all they want. How many sermons have I preached in over a year on giving? Two, last week and this week. It's not all the church is about. But God's word does have a lot to say about his money. And notice I did say his money. 
It's not ours. We're to give in obedience to God's word. We're to give with gratitude. We're to give because of our love for others. We're to give willingly, cheerfully, regularly, generously, but not for show. God's, God measures giving different than the world and rewards the giver appropriately. But most of all, uh, though, God is our model for giving. Now, you, maybe you're sitting out here today and, and maybe some of this is foreign to you. Maybe you've, you've, you don't understand giving. But let me clarify it maybe a little bit. Maybe you don't understand giving because you haven't accepted the gift that was given. Maybe you haven't received Christ as your Savior. If I was to give, if I'm, if I was to give this half bottle of water as a gift, you might be wanting to refuse that one. But if I was to give this to somebody, in order to get it. You have to take it. You have to receive it. Have you received Christ? Have you said, Christ, thank you so much for dying for somebody who has lived as rotten of a life as I have lived. Please save me from that life. If not, today is the day of salvation. Maybe you have another decision that you need to make. Maybe it's one of membership. Maybe it's one of missions. Maybe it's one of ministry. Is God calling you to be a missionary? Is God calling you to be a pastor somewhere else? Listen to God's voice. You can't win the fight. I fought for three years, and I'm just, just give up now because you won't win. Um, if you need a place to pray, you can come up here and pray on either side uh, and meet God one-on-one. -on -one. Would you join me in prayer, please? Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning. I thank you for uh, everything that you've put in Scripture to guide and direct us. It's, it's our instructions. Lord, the uh, Bible is the basic instructions before leaving earth. I thank you for the instruction book. I thank you for the amount of information you give us and how to handle what you've given us, which is everything. Lord, I, th I thank you for giving me the, the words. I thank you for giving me the strength. I've mentioned that these are not popular topics. But Lord, they're necessary topics, and they're your word which, which makes them important. Lord, I thank you for everybody that's here this morning. Lord, if there's something on someone's heart this morning, whether it be one of repentance and turning to Jesus Christ for, for salvation, Lord, I pray that that decision would be made would be made. Lord, I, I also pray that if, if there are other decisions that people are burdened with that they need to make, Lord, please help them humble themselves enough to make the decision. And it's in Jesus' name.